Hi, my name is Christine Hiller and I'm an interpretive naturalist for Minnesota State Parks and Trails at Jay Cook State Park. A common question that many visitors ask here is why is the water brown? Is it pollution or is it iron in the water? Well, it's neither of those things. To find the answer, let's head 178 miles north of here to the headwaters of the St. Louis River. This is the headwaters of the St. Louis River. Many of our Northland waters begin in wetland areas like this. As the plants on the edge of the river die, they decay and release a natural chemical called tannin, which stains the water brown. It's kind of like a giant teapot. Although the watercolor isn't from pollution, and people joke that it looks like root beer, you should still never drink it straight from the river. The water can be contaminated with things that will make you sick, so you should always treat and filter it before it's used. You might be wondering why plants produce tannins in the first place. These tannins in the river remind us of the life and death battles of the plants that live alongside it. Let's go check out one of these battles back at the park. Tannins are found in many trees such as maple, sumac, and this oak tree. You see these tannins in the oak in the fall when their leaves turn brown. Although trees have many great uses for animals and people, to a tree, one of its purposes in life is to make more trees. This oak will start making acorns when it's about 20 years old, but it'll make the most and the best acorns when it's closer to 80. That's a long time to survive. To help defend itself, this oak makes tannins that protect it from bacterial and fungal diseases so that the tree can stay healthy long enough to reproduce. Not only do tannins help defend the trees from disease, but they can also help defend plants from animals. See if you can figure out what tree-loving river animal we're going to go visit on the other side of the park. The North American beaver is a common animal in the park that is found in our streams and the main river channel. They chew down many different kinds of trees for food and to build their lodges. One beaver can chew down 200 trees in just one year. This has a big influence on what plants survive along the river. Nevertheless, some of those trees have a great way to defend themselves. A beaver's favorite tree to eat is the aspen tree. Remember that one of the tree's purposes is to reproduce, which it can't do if the beavers eat them when they're young. So, aspen saplings will defend themselves from gnawing beavers by making large amounts of tannin in their bark that makes it difficult for the beaver to digest, so they will avoid them. When this sapling grows into a reproducing tree, it will make less tannins and the beavers will find them tasty. There are other plants that use this type of defense. Let's take a look at one that people like to eat too. We have several kinds of berry plants that grow in the park, even some right along the river. Many of these berries, such as raspberry, gooseberry, and blueberries make tannins. Just like the young sapling, these blueberries make more tannin when they don't want animals to eat the berries. The berries are seeds. The plant won't reproduce if the berries are eaten before they are ripe. So they make a lot of tannin in the unripe berry that makes it taste bitter. When the berry and seeds are ripe, there's less tannin, so now the animals will eat them. Those seeds will eventually be put back onto ground with the animal droppings, and new berry plants can grow. Who knew that plants were so good at defending themselves? Eventually though, the plants do die, but even in death, they still contribute to the river ecosystem. Dead plants that layer up with mosses in the peat bogs will help absorb water to control flooding and also filter water to improve water quality. The tannins that are released help slow the decay in the bog so there's always plenty of peat to do this work. Hopefully the next time you see the tannin stained water rushing under the swinging bridge, you'll think about the life and death battles that the plants along the river are fighting each and every day.